Hello twin, how are you today? My name is Gabby and once again I'm going to be your teacher in today's class. Look, today we have our class number nine and we are going to start working on the book Discover English One. So please open your books at page 54. Okay, page 54. Here, this is page 54. All right, and look, we have a new comic, the Earth Explorer comic. Remember, this is the story of Kit, this boy, and Fizz, an alien. They have different adventures together, right? So here we have a new story. So we have Kit, Fizz, and a girl. She's Kit's friend from school right? So let's see what the story is about. We're going to listen and read it, okay? I'm going to play the recording, you listen and read. Entonces, les voy a pasar el audio con la historia y mientras vamos escuchando, prestamos atención siguiendo la lectura, que después vamos a explicar algunas cositas y hacer un par de actividades sobre esto, okay? Are you ready? Let's listen. Unit 5C, Exercise 1, Earth Explorer. Listen and read. Look, there's a match on Saturday. Let's go with Mindy. Mindy? No, don't ask her. Mindy, how about coming to the Kingsley Troy match on Saturday? David Becker's in the Troy team. Oh, okay. I like him. Saturday. David Becker's very good looking. Huh. Come on, Kingsley. Becker is very silly. Kit, where's your camera? Can I have it? I can't see! Goal! What? Where? Ah! Oh no! Becca's got the ball! Come on, David! How about using the zapper? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> All right, so now we are going to explain some things about this story. Okay, let me help you. We are going to read it again. So here we can see Kit and Fizz, and they are at a bus station and they are looking at the poster. Look, this is a poster about a football match between Kingsley and Troy, okay? Es un partido de fútbol. These are the names of the teams, Kingsley and Troy, like saying River, Boca, Barcelona, Real Madrid, etc. Okay, Kingsley and Troy, okay? It's a competition, a football match, all right? In a stadium, and we have the date. It's on Saturday, and it's at 2 p.m. And there's a famous football player. David Becker, right? So they start saying, look, there's a match on Saturday. Let's go with Mindy. Mindy? No, don't ask her. Okay, entonces Kit la quiere invitar a Mindy. Fizz no está tan convencido. All right, let's continue. Hi, Mindy. How about coming to the Kingsley Troy match on Saturday? David Becker's in the Troy team. Oh, okay, I like him. All right, excellent. So, Kit invites Mindy to the match. And he says that David Becker's in the Troy team. Remember, there are two teams, Kingsley and Troy, right? Let me highlight it for you. So, we've got Kingsley and Troy. And here it says, 
David Beckers in the Troy team. All right, so this football player is from the Troy team. I mean, he says, okay, I like him. So she likes this football player, right? Then, finally, it's Saturday. It's the day of the match and they are at the stadium. Look at their faces. Minty looks very happy, but Kit isn't so happy at this moment, right? Mindy's saying, David's Be David Becker's very good looking, okay? Remember, she likes David Becker. And Kit says, come on, Kingsley. And then this goes, Be Becker is very silly, okay? Silly significa como bobo, all right? So, look at the shirts, look at the clothes they are wearing and look at the colors, okay? So here, Mindy is wearing red and yellow clothes, but Fizz is wearing a blue t-shirt, light blue t-shirt, all right? So these are the colors of the two different teams. Look at David Becker, the football player, right? He's also wearing a red and yellow t-shirt, all right? And remember that David Becker plays in the Troy team. So red and yellow are Troy's colors, okay? David Becker plays in Troy and Mindy likes David Becker, so she's rooting for Troy. Como a Mindy le gusta este jugador, que juega para el equipo llamado Troy, okay? Está hinchando por ese equipo. All right, por eso tienen eh, la, los colores de la camiseta. Pero si se fijan, Kit está usando una camiseta distinta. So he roots for the rival, for Kingsley. Okay, Kit en cambio no hincha por Troy y por David Decker, hincha por Kingsley. Y eso nos lo podemos dar cuenta acá cuando dice, come on Kingsley, lo está alentando. All right, so let's go on. So here. Mindy goes, Kit, where's your camera? Can I have it? I can't see. Go! What? Where? Arr. Okay, so Mindy wants a camera, but here Fizz can't see the match because the bag is blocking his view. Okay? Como Mindy está buscando la cámara en la mochila, le bloquea la vista a uh, Fizz. All right? But then, Something happens. There's a goal. Okay. And look at, at Kid. He's very, very happy. Okay. So this was a goal by Kingsley or Troy. What do you think? Quién hizo el gol? Kingsley or Troy? Yes, Kingsley, of course. Okay. Si no, no lo estaría festejando. Right. Very good. Oh no, David Decker's got the ball. Come on, David. How about using the zapper? Okay, look at this. Look at the ending now. Acá, Kit se preocupa, dice, oh no, Becker's got the ball. Okay, se preocupa que tenga la pelota un jugador del equipo rival. But Mindy is happy. She says, come on, David. All right, but Fizz has an idea. How about using the zapper? Okay, look at this. The zapper. All right, the zapper is this machine that Fizz has in his hands. He's holding it. That's a zapper. And look what happens here, okay? There's an accident. Bueno, te cuento que este aparatito que tiene Fizz, que es un zapper, es algo que trajo de su planeta y tiene como poderes especiales. Tiene la capacidad de cambiar la realidad, ¿sí? En este caso, fíjense que lo que hace al apuntar hacia la cancha de juego, donde Becker tenía la pelota, hace aparecer como este charco de barro que hace que él se resbale y eh, pierda la pelota, digamos. ¿Ok? Por eso se ríen al final. So, that's the story. ¿Ok? The match between Kingsley and Troy. Mindy likes David Becker, so she roots for the Troy team. But Kid and Fizz root for Kingsley. All right? So now let's do some activities about the story. All right? 
Let's do on page 55, the next page, exercise number two. Answer the questions. So we have four questions about the comic. Look at number one. What time does the match start? Okay, the book gives us the answer, but this is not a complete answer. So let's try to make a whole sentence, right? They are asking what time? 2 p.m. Perfect. Pero cuando yo armo la respuesta completa, no voy a empezar con 2 p.m. Hay frases que tengo que usar antes, ¿no? All right, so we are talking about the match. Exactly. So instead of saying the match, para no repetir the match, como tengo en la pregunta, ¿qué puedo usar directamente en la respuesta? Do you know? Can you write it on the chat? Yes, very good. It. The match, it, it's the same. So we are going to say it start. Mm -hmm. Start. It start. Uh -uh. It starts. All right. Remember, we use S with he, she, or it. It starts at 2 p.m. That's the complete answer. Okay. The match starts at 2 p.m. It starts at 2 p.m. So you can copy these on your books. Now we are going to think about the next question. Who does Mindy like? So let's go back to the story and let's see if you can find it. Más allá de que te acuerdes o no te acuerdes, quiero que me cuentes en el chat en qué parte de la historia aparece esta información. Uy, sorry. Who does Mindy like? Who, remember, we use it to ask about people. Persons, okay? Who does Mindy like? Where can we find it? Picture one, two, three, four, five, six. What do you think? Yes, very good. It's here. In picture number two, Mindy says, Oh, okay, I like him. And here she says, I like him. Okay. Y este him, ¿de quién me está hablando? Fíjense cómo venía. Hi Mindy, how about coming to the Kingsley Troy match on Saturday? David Becker's in the Troy team. Oh, okay, I like him. Este him me está hablando de David Becker. Yes, que lo mencionó Kit en eh, la propuesta, la invitación que le hizo él a Mindy. All right. Y ella, para no repetir el nombre, dice, I like him. ¿Ok? Es como decir, él. All right. So, David Becker's in the Troy team. I like him. All right. Lo que pasa es que acá no vamos a poner I like him, como aparece en el texto. No. Obviamente. Primero estamos hablando de Mindy y no sobre nosotros mismos. Entonces, nuestra oración va a empezar con she. Hablamos de ella. Right? So, who does Mindy like? Okay, again, she like? No. We say she likes with S, all right? But we cannot say she likes him. No, acá no podemos poner him, okay? Porque si him es él, acá no mencioné a ninguna persona masculina para referirme. Hablo de Mindy, a ella me refiero usando she. Ahora, en vez de him, vamos a poner she likes David Becker. All right, the name of the person. ¿Sí? Si yo tuviera que seguir hablando sobre David Becker, ahora después de mencionarlo, ya sí puedo reemplazarlo. ¿okay? Pero la primera vez que lo traigo al tema, eh, uso su nombre. And now, let's read the next question. Number three. Does Becker score a goal? Ok, hacer un gol, anotar un gol. Does Becker score a goal? Yes, no, do you remember? Let's go back. Does he score a goal? Here, goal! Is it Becker's goal? No, remember, this was Kingsley's goal. Ok, acá hay un gol en el partido, pero no lo anotó Becker, porque era del equipo contrario, por eso lo veíamos también aquí festejar. All right, and here Becker's got the ball, but Fizz uses the supper, so he doesn't score a goal. 
all right? So let's write no. But can you help me with the rest of the, of the answer? Can you write it on the chat? Does Becker score a goal? ¿Cómo la seguimos? No. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, very good. This is easy. No, he doesn't. Excellent. Very good. And now, does Kit like Kingsley or Troy? Remember Kit, the boy? Does he like Kingsley or Troy? Let's go back. Do you remember this part? Do you remember that we talk about uh, the different colors of the shirts, right? So look, David Beckers got a red shirt and he's in the Troy team, but Kid is wearing a light blue shirt. So he doesn't like Troy, he likes Kingsley, right? So let's write that. Kit likes, sorry, Kit likes Kingsley, not Troy, he likes Kingsley, all right? Finish writing these, and then I'm going to show you a presentation about something new. For us. Ok, vamos a empezar a trabajar con un temita nuevo. Les voy a mostrar una presentación sobre ese tema. All right. And then we are going to see if we find examples of that in our story. Ok. Después de ver la presentación, vamos a volver al texto a ver si encontramos más ejemplos sobre este tema que les voy a explicar ahora. All right. So, now just listen to me. All right. So, remember this. Let's start with something that you already know, which are the subject pronouns. Do you remember the subject pronouns? What are they? Can you write some examples on the chat? What are subject pronouns? Come on, I want to read your examples. Okay, I'm going to help you. For example, I. What other subject pronouns do you know? Okay, we can use I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. Okay, ¿se acuerdan que según con quién estemos, sobre quién estemos hablando, la oración va a empezar normalmente refiriéndose a esa persona. A veces usamos el nombre o a veces usamos alguno de estos subject pronouns. I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. But now, look at these new words. Me. Ustedes conocen esta palabra, ya la han visto alguna que otra vez. Sabemos que la usamos para referirnos a nosotros mismos. Es para hablar sobre mí. You. Him. ¿Se acuerdan que lo vimos en la historia? Him, que había aparecido. Voy a volver yo un momentito. Acá, cuando dijimos, que, va, Mindy decía, I like him, dijimos que se estaba refiriendo a David Becker. Para no repetir, es como decir, me gusta él, me gusta David Becker. All right? So, let me go back to the presentation. Here, we use him to talk about a male person, ¿ok? Cuando hablamos de un varón, ¿sí? Usamos he o him. Ya vamos a ver cuándo he y cuándo him. No se preocupen. All right, let's go on. Her, if we talk about a woman, for example, right? Then it, us, and them, ¿ok? These words in red me, you, him, her, it, us, them, también son formas de referirme a mí, a vos, a él, a ella, a eso, a nosotros, a ellos, etc. ¿Sí? Pero no se llaman subject pronouns, estos los vamos a llamar object pronouns. ¿Ok? Ya vamos a ver por qué. Look at some examples here. We can say, I am nice. Ok, estoy hablando sobre mí. ¿sí? Yo soy agradable. I am nice. 
And then I'm going to say Mindy likes mm. Ok. Estas dos oraciones están conectadas. ¿Sí? Primero hablo sobre mí. Y después estoy diciendo algo sobre Mindy. Mindy likes who. ¿Quién le gusta a Mindy? ¿Ok? ¿Y con cuál de estos object pronouns lo podríamos expresar? ¿Ok? I am nice. Look, here we have a clue. ¿Ok? We are going to say Mindy likes me. ¿Ok? Yo le gusto a Mindy. All right. Then, let's see another example. Si yo digo, he is nice. ¿Ok? Ahora digo que él es agradable o él es lindo, lo que sea. We are going to say, Mindy likes... ¿Qué me falta acá? Come on, write it on the chat. Yes, him. Ok, look, he and him. One more example. They are nice. So we say, Mindy likes... Yes, them. Ok, them. Mindy likes them. Now, pay attention to this. Ok, fíjense, acá en los ejemplos respetamos los mismos colores que usamos para subject pronouns y object pronouns. En este, voy a tomar la del medio, esta. He is nice, Mindy likes him. Alright, so, he. Acá usé lo que llamamos un subject pronoun. ¿Ustedes se acuerdan que reciben ese nombre de subject pronoun? Porque ocupan la posición de el sujeto en la oración, ¿sí? Nos ayudan a decir sobre quién estamos hablando. Y los subject pronouns van antes del verbo. Acá, por ejemplo, el verbo es is, right? Entonces, he is nice. Él es agradable. Él es lindo. Then we say, Mindy likes him. Be careful here, ¿ok? Him is an object pronoun. Yes, we know that. Yes, he and him. The subject pronoun and the object pronoun. To talk about a male. Para hablar de un varón, si es el subject pronoun usamos he, si es el object pronoun usamos him. ¿Ok? Pero acá, si se fijan, el verbo es likes. ¿Right? El sujeto de esta oración es Mindy. ¿Yes? Acuérdense que el sujeto está antes del verbo. ¿Sí? Siempre. Entonces, Mindy likes him. Acá, la, la, eh, perdón, el motivo por el que estoy usando el object pronoun y no el subject pronoun es por la posición de esta palabra en la oración. ¿Sí? Los object pronouns van después del verbo. En cambio, los subject pronouns van antes del verbo. ¿sí? Vamos a volver al libro y ver un poquito más sobre esto en una grammar box que tenemos. So, let's go back to our book. Here, sorry, I'm going to clean the screen. There. All right. So, here... As I told you, we have a grammar box about <coughs> object pronouns, all right? First of all, let's highlight it here. And we have the same chart that we saw on the presentation. Tenemos el mismo cuadrito que vimos en la presentación. La columna de los subject pronouns, la de los object pronouns y los ejemplos, ¿sí? Lo que veníamos diciendo recién es que el subject pronoun, como ya sabíamos de antes, se usa antes de un verbo. La diferencia con el object pronoun es que se usa después del verbo. ¿Ok? Si yo tengo que referirme a alguna persona o cosa que ya había mencionado, pero en la oración va a aparecer después del verbo, vamos a usar el subject pronoun. Acá no podría haber dicho he, no. Al estar después del verbo no puedo hacer eso. Ok, so Mindy likes him. Ahora quiero que volvamos, como les decía antes, a la historia que leímos y ver si me ayudan a encontrar más ejemplos de object pronouns. All right? So, uno yo ya se los había marcado cuando explicamos esto de David Becker y him. I like him. All right? <coughs> ok, let's see if we can find more examples. Yo les voy a leer rapidito la historia de vuelta y ustedes me van a decir en el chat si aparece algún object pronoun. All right? 
Let's see. Look, there's a match on Saturday. Let's go with Mindy. Mindy? No, don't ask her. Ataka u algún object pronoun. Yes. Yes, very good. It's her. Okay. Ask, acá es el verbo. Es la acción de preguntar. ¿Sí? Acá, <coughs> Fizz le está diciendo a Kit que no, que no le pregunte a ella. Y nosotros sabemos que con ese her se está refiriendo a Mindy, ¿sí? Que ya la mencionó recién, right? Entonces, <coughs> es para no repetir el nombre, pero como aparece después del verbo, ¿sí? Preguntarle a ella, ¿ok? Usamos her y no she. Don't ask her. Hi, Mindy. How about coming to the Kingsley Troy match on Saturday? David Deckers in the Troy team. Oh, ok. I like him. Acá habíamos marcado him and David Decker. Right? Let's see the next. David Decker's very good looking. Huh. Come on, Kingsley. Decker is very silly. Here, any object pronoun? No, no object pronouns. What about number four? Keith, where's your camera? Can I have it? I can't see. Go! What? Where? Rrr. Any object pronoun here? Acá te doy una pista. Hay un object pronoun. A ver si lo encontrás. Decime en el chat cuál es. ¿Dónde está? Okay, excellent. Here the object pronoun is it. Okay. And what does it refer to? ¿A qué se está refiriendo? Acuérdense que it es para objetos, no para personas. Okay, yes, the camera. Kids' camera. Excellent. Oh no, Becker's got the ball. Come on, David. How about using the zapper? Whoa! Oh no! <laughs> All right. So here at the end of the story, we have no more object pronouns. Okay? Pero acá, fíjense, tenemos tres ejemplos: it, him, her. Y en todos los casos respetan la regla que dijimos que van después del verbo. Ask her, like him, have it. All right? That's the rule with the object pronouns. They go after the verb. All right? And here we have the list if you don't remember. Now, you're going to continue with the next part of the class on Zoom with your teacher. So I hope you have fun, Twin, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.